Hey, welcome back to Occidental Science. Claudio here. When you tear down an old equipment before you throw it away, uh, there is always something to learn uh, from the engineering that was behind the uh, design of the apparatus. And if you like tinkering and do it yourself, uh, there's always to record something from an old equipment before it goes to the dumpster. So today we will see a couple of very different apparatuses, a TV set receiver and a PCB stencil printer machine. While helping a friend in freeing up space in his building, I had the opportunity to dismantle and keep as much as I wanted because everything was destined to be thrown away. So I stumbled upon an old PCB stencil printer machine made in Germany with a lot of interesting gears. This machine has a couple of rod shaped rails with ball bearing sleds. On top of them, the center carriage holds the squeegee so it can be moved back and forward. The action to move the squeegee up and down is controlled through pneumatic actuators and the air is carried through a spiral tube along the rails. A combination of air pressure and fine height adjustment made by a couple of micrometers assures the solder paste be spread evenly and with a consistent thickness across the stencil, which is an important point in making quality electronic board assemblies. So I've been able to recover compressed air actuators, distributors, filters, valves and tubing and a motor and its driver, the metal box that used to hold the electric panel with the control electronics, two ball bearing rods and some other random mechanical parts among which adjustment knobs and two Mitutoyo micrometers and even this positional potentiometer. Also the front panel was a source of cool multi-tone potentiometers and illuminated buttons. While dismantling a machine is certainly a trove of very useful and hard to source, often expensive parts, even a humble TV sat receiver could give some. To speed up things, uh, I already dismantled this. Uh, this, uh, and this was the front panel, it was a TV sat decoder. And, uh, and this is the main board. First off, we can learn something about the engineering behind its design, so in this case, let's focus on the power supply section of the internal board. We can start from where the power cord comes in. The power cord is turned around a toroidal ferrite to dampen high frequency noise coming back from the internal circuit. This is a useful part to keep. The toroidal ferrite, not the power cord, of course. From here, a fuse carry the power to this metal oxide varistor to protect the following circuit from possible voltage surges coming from the power line, such as those caused by EMP generated by lightnings. You can see my previous video about EMP to learn more, link on overlay and in the description. The second following component is this inductor. It is a common mode inductor typically designed to stop noise, working in conjunction with two capacitors. Then we have a resistor in series. It is meant to limit an inrush current in the case the plug is inserted when the AC phase is at its peak, because what it follows is a full bridge rectifier that feeds a fairly large capacitor, so the resistor in parallel to the capacitor has the function to discharge it when the cord plug is disconnected. And uh, you can see here this capacitor has this cap, this rubber cap, that is used to, to prevent uh, the risk that the capacitor uh, discharge to the uh, chassis. And uh, here we have a um, component that um, this power component here that uh, is a MOSFET with uh, a circuit, an integrated circuit that uh, does the regulation for uh, switching regulation, uh, chopping the uh, voltage that uh, the capacitor has lived and uh, uh, supplying this uh, transformer that uh, out the out on, on that on the other side provides the uh, insulated low voltage that uh, uh, supplies 
circuit uh, inside the, and I, w I won't go into this part because this is a really complex but we can see here this is the serial port uh, and, uh, and this is the integrated circuit uh, that uh, um, provides the conversion from TTL to uh, the 232 not sure you can read it uh, it is a SD232 converter from this board it is possible to recover some useful components everybody has his or her own preferences about what to recover and what to leave but inductor is usable in other projects so as uh, some power resistors also the metal side resistor and these ferrite beads are good to keep ferrite beads are dirty cheap but often they are supplied in large quantity only so if you need just a handful of them it makes sense to collect them with careful use of hot gun it's pretty easy to desolder the components from the board and this is the the box of the chassis that uh, hosted the board and this is uh, uh, one part that can be recovered uh, uh, for future projects maybe I, I will keep this for future, proje future projects one interesting part that worth be recovered is the metal enclosure I already recovered more metal enclosures from another set of box and from a couple of computer DVD drivers. These boxes come useful in DIY projects. It is easy to attach a front panel with just an aluminum stripe that can be purchased from any hardware store. And being made of galvanized steel, these enclosures are perfect to protect the circuit from external electromagnetic fields. Well, for today, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.